Welcome back to the channel. If you are trying to get a lower APR on credit cards you apply for, no matter what, here are the steps you need to follow. Step number one, you need to evaluate your situation. Very important, you have to understand. Every customer's circumstances are different. So my question to you is, boss, what is your financial situation? You have to have a clear idea about your balance sheet, about your assets, liabilities, because if you are sitting there and you are trying to get a lower APR on credit cards, you need to make sure that you have a situation that actually warrants that, that uh, reduction for you. In other words, how are you going to uh, convince the card issuer, the bank, the credit union, that giving you a lower APR, so that you deserve a lower APR in the first place? So I want you to sit down right now. I want you to write down your assets in one column on a piece of paper. I want you to write down your assets. And I'm talking about all of, all of your assets, okay? Your, uh, the cash you have in the bank account, if you have a car, a fully paid car, if you have a house, a fully paid house, everything that you own, I want you to write it down in one column. And in the other column, in the second column, I want you to put down your liabilities, plus your debts, your obligations. So this is very important because then you will have a clear idea what your, your net worth is. See, net worth is total assets minus total liabilities. And if you have something positive, that's really good because then you can actually, you are in a situation where you can actually uh, convince the lender that, hey, listen, the credit card issuer for that matter, that, hey, listen, I have a, a healthy situation and I think I deserve instead of 12%, I deserve 10% or I deserve 8%. See, you got to really substantiate the reason why. And when we talk about looking at your financial situation, I'm talking about your, your uh, net worth, right? Very important, but also your FICO score. So where where are you at, boss? Where you at? Talk to me. Are you in the 500, 600, 700, 800? Obviously, if you're in the 800s, you should be getting a lower APR anyway. If you're in the 500 or 600, then we have we, we got to talk. So you need to strategize about how to how you how you should really really go about doing things. Okay? So my the point here, is step number 1, evaluate your situation. Know your total net worth and you need to know your FICO score. I mean, for real, you, you got to check your FICO score and really be sure that you are at 525 or 625 or 725 or whatnot. You got to have a, a specific number in mind. Step number two. One thing you want to do here is that once you have a, a clear idea about your financial situation, you need to consider all of your options first. See, even before you think about negotiating a lower APR, you got to think about the uh, the canvas. You know, the diversity of options that you have. You have uh, so we are talking about your current credit card, right? You want to get a lower credit card on your current credit card. But how about thinking about cars that offer you an intro offer? In other words, you have a car that gives you like they gave you like uh, an introductory offer for nine months, twelve months. 15 months. So the whole thing is that, you know, credit is a game. You got to think about, should I just negotiate a lower APR on my current card or should I just go for it? A newer card, a new card that has a better APR, that has a lower APR, but also has a, an attached offer to it. Let's say a balance transfer or something of that nature. So this is an internal calculus that you have to think about and you have to see what really works for you. Okay. So number one, Look for cars that actually have an intro offer. Some cars will add, will give you an intro offer for 12 months, even 21 months. Think about that. You know, the Wells Fargo Reflect card, for example, offers you 0% intro APR on purchases for up to 21 months and 0% APR on balance transfers up to 21 months. Think about that. That's just a biggie right there, okay? So besides cars with, with a, an introductory offer, I want you to think about low interest credit cards. Because some credit cards are, have interest that are very low. Interest rates that are very low. Okay, if you think about the Navy, you know Navy Federal credit cards or Penn Fed credit cards, for that matter, they have a very low, low APR. So it's very important to have a clear idea about your options, even before thinking about negotiating a lower APR with your current credit card issuer. Okay, don't do things. Uh, don't rush. I want you to sit down and evaluate your options. Maybe you have offers that are just sitting there. They, they probably send you pre-qual offers a few months ago and you just got the offer. You're not really interested. And now is the time to go back 
to your closet and really actually uh, take all the paperwork out and see where you re- where you really at, where you are really at. They are important. Okay, so this is so step number one. I want you to evaluate your situation. Step number two, I want you to consider all of your options first. Step number three, boss. You can try to seek pre-approval. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here is that your current credit card, you know, they have a lower APR, okay. Or if you if you don't have a current credit card, you just you just trying to get a lower APR on your next credit card. Seek pre-approval first. The thing is, the good thing is that most major credit card companies allow you to see which of their cards you can be pre-approved for or be pre-qualified for before actually submitting an application. So, and I'm talking about for anything from Chase to Capital One to Discover to uh, Navy Fed to Wells Fargo to Bank of America, they all have pre-qualification or pre-approval processes that allow you to actually get, to have an idea of what you might qualify for. When we speak about credit cards or credit cards and we use the, the terms pre-approval or pre-qualification, they are interchangeable. They are synonymous in this specific context. There are, a, there are other areas where pre-approval means something that is distinct from pre-qualification. But for today, for all intents and purposes, for this specific discussion, pre-approval and pre-qualification, or even pre-qual for that matter, mean the same thing. Okay, so basically, you you only have a soft credit pool, which will not hurt your credit score. Okay, and if you do get pre-approved, you will know your chances of being approved for an account. And even though, again, nothing is really guaranteed here, but at least you can have an idea. So here is the approach for you, boss. Here's the approach. What I want you to do here is. I want you to really uh, talk to your current bank and see which of their credit cards you might be interested in. And then you actually have to express interest. You got to give them a call or you go to a branch and say, listen, I would like to be pre-approved for this card. You have to say it explicitly. I would like to be, be, be pre-approved for, for a credit card. And just let, let, let it sit there. Don't rush things. They'll, let, they'll get back to you. Okay. Now, big decision time. Big decision time. If you currently have a card, a credit card, and you are trying to get a lower credit card or trying to negotiate a lower credit card, a lower credit card APR, what you want to do here is that you want to call the, the your card issuer and say, listen, if the card that you want, if you want a newer, let's say you want a second card from them, you can say, listen, I would like to be pre-approved for a second credit card. I already have an account with you, and that account obviously must be in good standing and you are trying to negotiate another credit card from them, okay? The next thing I want you to do here, if you are trying to uh, get a lower APR on on your credit cards, you got to apply. I mean, if you don't apply, you will never get a credit. I mean, you know, you need to apply so that they can actually consider your application and uh, and approve you or deny you and uh, or something in between. So what we're talking about here is what? When we talk about the credit card application, make sure that you apply at a branch. Now, I know this. a lot of folks believe this is a controversial, well, controversial when we talk about applying at a branch. I'm not saying do not apply online or do not apply over the phone. I'm not saying that or, or don't apply in the mail. What I'm trying to say here is that if you are trying to get leverage, if you're trying to have a something, if you are trying to get a higher limit, or a lower APR, and you have a less than stellar credit, you, your chances of uh, getting approved with a lower APR and a higher limit are stronger. They are higher if you apply at a branch. And I'm not just sitting here talking about anecdotes. No, we are speaking about empirical evidence that we have seen it for the last 30 years. Okay, so you want to go to the branch and fill out the application there. Okay, you want to have a conversation with uh, with a rep before, and even better, you want the uh, the rep to assist you in filling out the application. And what you want to do here is that you want to bring bring along your income, your income, um, your income proof proof of your of your income. Right, we're speaking about your W twos, your ten ninety nines, and whatnot. You can probably also bring your tax returns for the last three years or two years. You can have also your your bank statements. 
from other institutions. So everything that can, can prove to the credit card issuer that you have uh, employment, you have proof of employment, or you, you are working or you are generating income, please bring it along. And when you talk, so when you go to the branch, ask questions. You want to gauge your approval odds even before you fill out the application, but you have to fill out the application, okay? One thing you need to understand here is that you want to do the, the, the soft pool actually happen, the pre-qualification happens online or happens uh, in the mail. You cannot go to a branch and be, pre- and be pre-approved. It happens rarely. Those decisions are made actually uh, automatically or following certain processes. What I'm trying to say here is that you actually get the mail or you get the you get pre you get pre-approval online, but when when it when it's time to actually approve to actually apply for the credit card itself, you go to a branch. Step number five. One thing I want you to do right now, and this works like crazy. This is really, really one secret that I really want to share with you. See, when you are approved, you want to call to negotiate a lower APR. You have to understand when we talk about, let's say, let's say Chase just approved your credit card, right? They give you a five thousand with an APR of twenty five percent. I'm being hypothetical here, okay? Five thousand, twenty five percent APR. Now, what you want to do here is that in the next two weeks. So, because the thing is, this hack, you have to actually do it very, very quickly. So in the next two or three weeks, you have to call Chase and say, listen, I believe I deserve a lower APR because blah, 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 because my, my FICO score is high, because of uh, this, because of that, because of this and that. So you got to substantiate why you believe Chase or the card issuer, for that matter, should actually grant you a lower APR. And please be polite, okay? You are the one asking for a favor because uh, asking for a lower APR is a favor. It's not. It's not your prerogative. It's not. It's not your right. So you want to be polite, and you want to say, "Listen, I believe I deserve twenty percent, or I, d- I deserve eighteen percent." And at that point, Chase will have to actually, actually consent to your to your lower APR, or meet you some. They have to meet you somewhere midway. Okay, you know why? Because once they issue a credit card to you, they are vested. They have a vested interest in you. They cannot rescind that credit card. They cannot cancel it. You have to understand. It takes a lot of time and money, for that matter, for credit card issuers to actually, uh, quote unquote, acquire customers. There's something called client acquisition cost. And the thing here is that the card issuer will not want to lose you at that point. They already have you. They already granted you a line of credit. So now it's up to you to actually see how they can actually, uh, you know, work with you. So if you ask, as long as your 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 request is, uh, I would say, uh, decent, they will approve it. Okay, so the, so you will get the lower APR that you want. But you have to do it quick, though. You have to do it within 30 days after being approved, after having the after after having the physical card in your hands. You have to do this, and then once you do that, once you do that, you can actually enjoy a lower APR. We have tried this hack for the last 30, 35 years. It has always, always, always worked. Now, the last thing I want you to think here, here is that if you are denied for some reason, and you know this, this can happen. It's not the end, end of the world. You know, people believe. You know. My ass got denied and I'm just like, you know, I'm just out of here. I'm just tired. I'm pissed, whatever. If you are denied, one way to to pay less interest, to pay less in interest for a limited time is to apply for a balanced transfer credit card, most of which lets you secure a 0% intro APR on transfer balances from 12 to uh, 21 months. Earlier, I just spoke to you about the the Wells Fargo Reflect card, right? And that card gives you access to uh, 0%, in other words, free 0% funding for for 21 months. Now, just keep in mind that this offers typically include a balanced transfer fee, so you will not get access to that 0% APR for free. However, applying for a balanced transfer credit card is a great option to consolidate debt without further hurting your credit, okay? 
So this is an important end. Uh, so, you know, and now think about that. Now, if we were to go back to what I just told you about the Wells Fargo Rayflex card, I mean, this is a great card. I personally have that card and uh, it's a great card. I mean, think about it. You get a 0% introductory APR for up to 21 months, which is really, if you think about it, one of the longest offer for purchases and qualifying balance transfers currently available. And the Wells Fargo Reflect card offers 0% intro for 18 months from account opening, okay, but uh, from account opening on purchases and balance transfers, but cardholders who make at least the minimum payments on time each month during the intro period will have their zero interest periods extended by three more months, okay? This is really good. And one thing I want to say here is that you always want to keep your options open simply because one card issuer the clients, you know, they rejected they rejected your application. Doesn't mean that you, your situation, your financial situation is just, is really bad. No, it just means that at this time you do not meet their requirements. And and the cool thing is there are a lot of there are gazillions of banks out there whose requirements you certainly meet. This is why I was just talking to you earlier about making sure that you actually evaluate your situation, you gauge your financial situation. So you have a clear idea of where you stand FICO wise, okay? You have to have a clear idea of where you stand in terms of uh, your net worth, your total assets, your total liabilities, so that you are able to actually convince another issuer that, hey, listen, I'm a great candidate. Even if Chase doesn't want my ass, at least I'll go to Bank of America or Wells Fargo and they will want my ass there. Here are a few pro tips that I want to give you before I close to this conversation. The thing here is that when we talk about getting a lower APR on credit cards, the quintessential conversation should revolve around how you want to use the credit card that you are thinking about getting. Because the whole thing is, if you are speaking about having a lower APR on credit cards, it's because you want to use the card for certain purposes, right? So remember that you, but whatever uh, purpose you assign to a particular card will have an effect on your, uh, on uh, your payment history, but also most importantly on the balances you keep on the card. Okay. So when we speak about card types, credit card types, there are several. You have rewards credit cards. So those are ideal for earning cash back, points or miles on your spending. You have introductory 0% APR cards. Those are preferable for avoiding interest charges if you want to transfer a balance or if you want to, if you plan to use the card to finance a large purchase. You have sign up bonus cards, which are, which are really ideal for earning extra points on a large plan purchase. You will need to, to spend a certain amount on the card within a few months of having it to qualify. And then you, you have a secure credit cards. Those are great for building credit or raising a low credit score. So with a secure credit card, you actually provide a deposit to the lender that is typically equal to your credit limits. Okay. And so because this reduces risk for the lender, secure cards are often easier to qualify for than uh, traditional unsecure credit cards. Then you have a net, and last but not the least, you have a student credit cards, which, which are really ideal for building credit and earning points while you are in college. So this is really important to think about that. Okay. And, um, and if you want to lower your APR on credit cards, make sure you understand terms such as annual fees, APR, of course, balance transfer fees, cash advance, foreign transaction fees, minimum payment and penalty APR. Obviously, the whole the whole conversation about a lower APR is, I would say, subjective, because to to me, what is a good a, what is a good APR, maybe uh, not a good APR for you. Maybe may, may, you know it really depends on your financial situation. So, the whole thing here is that anything anything that is a single digit is great already. If you are below ten percent, you are just you should be really really thankful. Next, if you have anything between 15 and 12, 15 and 10 percent also is really great. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to always get a lower APR on credit cards. And so we spoke about assessing your situation, considering all your options first, 
seeking pre-approval, applying of course, and calling to negotiate a lower APR after you have been approved. And last but not the least, I spoke to you about things that you need to do. If you were denied for the credit card, apply for a transfer, a balanced transfer credit card. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.